Hello and welcome back to our channel. I'm Danish, and you are watching Iraqi Dinar YouTube channel. Hopefully you all will be fine let's start today. There have been significant developments in the realm of currency revaluation, particularly concerning the Iraqi Dinar, IQD, and the Vietnamese Dong, VND, generating substantial buzz within the Intel community. According to Intel guru Mai via PDK, there is a flurry of chatter about the possibility of tomorrow being the much anticipated day for a major shift. The speculation is at an all time high, with some sources claiming that everything might have already started unfolding yesterday. This has led to a wave of excitement among those closely following the situation, especially as the banks in Iraq have closed signaling that significant changes could be imminent. Mai's contacts in Iraq are reportedly buzzing with anticipation for the next three days, as rumors circulate that key parts of the revaluation RV, process have already been set in motion. These rumors suggest that we are on the brink of witnessing a historic financial event. However, while the excitement is palpable, it is important to remain calm and cautious. May I emphasize that the sheer number of people convinced that the revaluation is about to be seen as staggering, which only adds to the intrigue surrounding these developments. Intel guru Nino shared insights following a high-profile visit to Washington, D.C. The purpose of this visit, as speculated, was likely to prove to the U.S. government that Iraq's non-compliant banks were taking steps to align with international financial standards. This alignment is seen as a crucial step towards the RV. Nino expressed optimism, stating that he sees the revaluation in the near future, and many share his sentiment that it's about time for this to happen. Meanwhile, another Middle Eastern source, Guru N has been addressing some of the misinformation circulating within the community. For instance, there were rumors that the small denomination notes had been released, which would indicate a significant step towards revaluation. However, Guru N clarified that this is not the case. He emphasized that any such release would occur simultaneously across the entire country ensuring that all banks and financial institutions operate under the same system. He cautioned against believing premature reports, underscoring the need for accurate information. On the financial stability front, the Ministry of Finance in Iraq announced that the country has maintained its credit rating, as issued by the Standard Poor's SP, credit rating agency. In a statement received by the ESS news agency, the ministry highlighted that Iraq continues to hold a stable B rating. This rating reflects the ongoing financial and economic reforms pursued by the Ministry of Finance, which have contributed to maintaining a level of foreign currency reserves that exceed the country's external public debt. Furthermore, Iraq has successfully met its external financial obligations, thanks in part to the stability of crude oil prices. The ministry's statement also pointed out that the SP agency sees potential for Iraq to improve its credit rating in the future. This potential improvement is contingent upon several factors, including an increase in Iraq's economic growth rate, diversification of the state's oil and non-oil public financial revenues, and an increase in the per capita income share of the national income. Additionally, the continuation of financial and economic policy reforms will be crucial in enhancing Iraq's economic standing on the global stage. In the Kurdistan region, there have been notable advancements in the banking system, as described by Prime Minister Masrabat Sani during the opening ceremony of the Hicks International Technology Exhibition in Erbil for the year 2024. Bartsani highlighted that the banking system in the Kurdistan region has become significantly stronger and more effective in recent months. This progress has been marked by the introduction of around 500,000 public sector workers to the Harbi banking system, a system approved by the regional government for the disbursement of salaries and financial dues. 
Bartsani's speech underscored the transformation in the region's banking services, which have reached a level where thousands of employees no longer need to stand in long queues to receive their salaries. This development is part of a broader initiative to modernize the region's financial infrastructure. So far, 200 ATMs have been installed across the Kurdistan region, with plans to install a total of 1,000 machines in various cities and regions. This initiative is expected to significantly enhance the accessibility of banking services, making it easier for individuals to conduct financial transactions. Furthermore, Bartsani announced that the program also includes integrating 1 million workers from the private sector into the Harbi banking system by next year, further expanding the reach and efficiency of the banking system in the region. Over the past 10 months, banking services in the Kurdistan region have witnessed a five-fold increase in development, a testament to the regional government's commitment to financial modernization and economic growth. These developments in Iraq and the Kurdistan region signal a period of significant change and progress. With continued efforts in financial reform, currency revaluation, and banking modernization, Iraq is positioning itself for a more stable and prosperous future. The anticipation in the air is palpable, and the next few days could prove to be critical in determining the trajectory of these exciting developments.